hi hello and welcome to our channel doorbell ding dong and this video is a continuation of my previous video which is on rcsa if you would like to see what this is about it is about the risk and control self-assessment and how one should perform rcsa for for the project in this video we will be looking into few different type of risk which are physical security risk asset management risk infrastructure risk and contract risk and i will be covering few more uh, types of risk in the subsequent videos without any further ado let's get into the topic right away to start with we will be looking into physical security risk before we get into the physical security risk we need to understand what is physical security and why any organization need to have a best process around this physical security when you talk about the physical security it's not about one particular setup that we are going to implement for the entire organization it varies from different areas or the different levels that are being segregated in an organization you know for each and every employees for example uh, when you consider this physical security of an organization the customization will be vary from one area to other area for example let's take area zero the area zero may be an open place where anyone can get in and reach out to and reception people asking for more information on their purpose of visit and area one may be a common place that any employee uh, they use their employee id or the access card to get into the common area so that that common path will take them to to the necessary project area if you look closely the difference between area 0 and area 1 area 1 can be accessed by an employee or any other person escorted by an authorized person so that a person can get into the area 1 for the purpose now let's talk about the area 2 area 2 may be a combinations or collections of a different type of projects or the projects bay any person for example the project a is needs to be accessed by anyone then that person need to have a project bay access to enter the the project room otherwise the persons will not be authorized there are few different type of security the monitoring or detecting mechanism that can be used or enforced on the doors to prevent any non-legitimate person entering the project bay lastly we will be talking about area 3 area 3 can be a data center hub room or camera monitoring room or ahu which is air handling unit or ups room or anything for that matter these rooms are accessed only by a subject matter expert not by anybody else now let's see what are the common risks that are associated or linked with the physical security the first one is tailgating and second one is unaccounted visitors and third one is theft of documents if the project be considered to be a very sensitive and uh, uh, very confidential processing data processing bay and of course any such physical security violation can happen due to the uh, the lack of trainings or lack of awareness given to the employee the second type of risk is going to be infrastructure risk and as you know the infrastructure is made or it's built by the combination of or combined set of devices like routers firewall servers core switches ips and ideas but nowadays i think the next generation firewall is also having an ips and ideas capability so those devices are con collectively called as infrastructure this infrastructure can be customized you know depends on the project's needs or the business requirements so for example where any company is winning an opportunity or bidding an opportunity uh, when they have the clear objective on mind so what kind of a services they are agreed to deliver back to a client then in order to deliver those services the technology support is definitely needed so when we when we say the technology it can be storage or can be a server or it can be anything on the cloud so when we have something like this then we need those technology customized depends on the business requirement which will be obviously helping 
the company to deliver the services what they agreed in the initial discussion or the as per the agreement what they have with their client so when we have the infrastructure ready which means we need to have a clear mapping of those infrastructure to our business process because we have to track what kind of a technology that we are using in order to deliver the services back to the client because we need to understand the expense month on month basis what kind of a technology and how long for example if in case we are going to store some information on behalf of our client we need to understand what kind of a standard says or agreement says how long you know and company should retain the information which means i'm pretty much talking about the retention period so each and everything needs to be tracked and monitored by the expert so that we are not violating any of the standards or any of the agreement or the clauses that we have with our clients now let's see what are the common types of risk that are associated with infrastructure to start with the technology linkage with the business process were not mapped which means we have not recorded or tracking all the technology services that are enabled for our business. For example, when we are using license for our customers and we are paying in millions, and if the license utilization is not effectively tracked, then we are losing our money there. Next one would be ineffective change management. For example, when we have the web restrictions because at the end of the day we are processing some sensitive data for our client and if the web restrictions is not properly applied because the firewall, the recent firewall changes has whitelisted every other size that's supposed to be blacklisted as per the project requirements and none of the people could track it because they do not have the change recorded somewhere systematically. And the next one would be the no risk assessment conducted for example any of the organization they want to have the isms certified which means i'm talking about iso 27001 certification for their organization then according to the isms the risk assessment for the company is mandatory which will be helping us or raising an awareness of the services that they are maintaining or on the devices that you are maintaining inside the organization that could potentially lead to a data leakages or confidentiality breach by doing a risk assessment one should prevent or minimize the risk to a tolerate level. Following components are closely interconnected with the disaster recovery and business continuity management. The disaster recovery will be helping us to understand if the primary services are down and how soon we can enable the secondary services in order to ensure the business continuity. And the business continuity management often uh, needs needs to be recorded at the contractual level and each and every procedures needs to be captured so that um, any organization can have an effective business continuity management for their company the difference between business continuity and disaster recovery is just like that the business continuity focusing on the business operational during a disaster and the disaster recovery focus on restoring the data access and IT infrastructure after a disaster. Next we are moving into asset management risk. Asset management, what exactly the name uh, amplifies? The asset management is managing the number of assets that are used for the business in order to deliver any services or enable any services for the customers. The asset management not only limit a person to track of the hardware assets only, but also it's going to keep track of the software or the virtual assets that are used in, in the course of delivering services back to our customers or our clients. Now let's see the common types of risk that, that are associated with asset management process. And first one would be ineffective tracking. Ineffective tracking can be associated with hardware assets, virtual assets, or any software licenses. It's because at the end of the day, it's gonna, you know, help you in saving some amount. If it is not properly reconciled, you end up paying extra for the for the services that you have not been used uh, in the course of delivering services to our clients or customers. The next common risk would be incorrect asset reconciliation and this activity pretty much acting as a deductive mechanism uh, to the first one when we do not have an effective tracking of asset management. And next one would be improper license or warranty management. As I have told you before, uh, the license or warranty management needs to be uh, tracked on a timely basis. If not, 
the kind of a software or the services that you're running with may run out of the licenses that may disrupt your business or if in case you're not using any services but still because of the ineffective reconciliation you're ending up paying for the license that you have not been uh, used for the business and the last risk would be ineffective as a decommissioning process so whenever we have a lot of infra devices a lot of devices that we used to enable our business for our customers or our clients then we need to understand what are the devices that are nearing the end of its life cycle because any of those obsolete devices still in the part of your infra setup then it may create a backdoor for hackers to get in and steal the data so it is not only you know contributing for a data leakages but also uh, you know have, have a major impact on your credibility and on the reputational of an, a company or an organization and the last type of risk that we're going to see in this episode is going to be contract risk whenever you are having a contract signed with your customers or your vendors or your client you need to understand all the primary services that you agreed to deliver back to your customer it's recorded properly without any hidden agenda if you feel so the hidden agenda needs to be rectified by a change to contract or contract amendment next word would be on the contract scope uh, the scope will expand uh, likely to be expanded over a period of time because you will develop a, a lot of relationship with your with your clients or customers and they'll try to you know uh, accommodate few other tasks that you feel that these are part of the services but you need to understand whether this is in line with your contract you know a scope what you initially agreed when you're winning an opportunity so you need to understand what are the things that you are stand liable and what what you are not because this clear indication should be made crystal clear for both the parties so that you will not be ending up in paying a huge penalty because of you know not having a clear understanding on the terms and conditions portrayed on the agreement or the contract last common risk could be service modification by the customers or the client during the valid contract period so whenever you're having a valid contract period you need to make sure any of the modifications that needs to be accommodated as a part of your existing services that needs to be called for a committee meeting to understand whether this is included on the initial agreement if it is new then you have to call for a change contract note or the contract amendment that includes all the new modifications or the new changes that are made to the services as a part of our initial business what we agreed for the customer so that both the parties will be stand satisfied or fully satisfied uh, with the kind of a terms and conditions portrayed on the document uh, on the contract document i would say all right guys now we come to an end of this episode hope the information what we shared is really helpful for you guys if you feel so please give a thumbs up and if you are new to our channel please do subscribe uh, for the instant notification when we upload any new videos similar to it and thank you so much and take care guys